you mentioned soup and salads. And this is something I've found, and I have seen this in the research as well, but I, I wanted to ask you this. Do you think the, the order of your food affects your total energy intake? So I had a salad yesterday before I had my dinner. And it was this giant salad, so many dark leafy greens. There was nuts in there and there was a little bit of avocado and there was no sort of calorie dense dressing on it. And by the time I finished that thing, I was full and I looked at my main meal and honestly, I had to force myself a little bit to eat that main meal. I didn't finish it. I put it in the fridge. So is there something in the, if we're striving for weight loss, considering the order of, of the food that we're eating? Yes, definitely. Well, that's a great tool for weight loss because you had the raw vegetables first. And raw vegetables are not all um, like raw jicama, raw carrots, raw beets, raw peppers, raw anything you eat. The raw um, food is not as bioavailable calorically. You lose some caloric absorption. And the raw vegetables, obviously, as you know from the salad, take up volume in the stomach and you have stretch receptors and you, can, and you feel more satiated from the, all the chewing too. The time you spend chewing and also... Breaking down and chewing really well also satisfies your desire for to chew and your desire for nutrients as well. So yes, definitely that um, incorporating a mixture of raw and cooked vegetables and starting each meal with raw vegetables, having salad before lunch and having raw vegetables with a dip before dinner or another, you know, definitely helps people control their desire to overeat. And we want people to be satisfied but not distended or full. Do you think dressings sometimes throws people off a little bit when it comes to salads. I mean, there's all sorts of super calorie dense dressings that you can find. But mostly they're made from oil. Once you're off oil and putting nuts and seeds in the dressing, we generally give people about a half an ounce of nuts and seeds in the form of dressing or sauces or dips, or an avocado dip, a salsa dip, a, a hummus dip, or a dressing on the salad made with nuts and seeds, not made with oil. And they're usually getting about a half an ounce of nuts and seeds if they're overweight or obese. They're still getting half an ounce per meal for to make the sauces and dressings taste good. Myself or you don't have to limit it to a half an ounce. I can eat an ounce with each meal because I'm phys more physically active. But certainly I'm saying it makes for more satiety and it makes for more absorption of phytochemicals and it makes for, and when we're not snacking all day long or eating nuts between meals because by having the fat with the meal, you're getting more benefit because you're absorbing 20 to 50 times as much of the anti-cancer phytochemicals and the vegetables you're eating when you have some fat incorporated in that meal. So you get more more a better nutritional profile. That's really important. Yeah. So having some sort of fat with those dark leafy greens. Exactly. And you would think, look, what do the studies show? Like avocado is even more fatty than even nuts and seeds as far as the protein fat ratio. But do the studies show that avocado increases risk of diabetes, increases risk of obesity, increases risk of cardiovascular disease, raises cholesterol, raises triglycerides? No, it shows the opposite. Because it's still a whole food and because... It's not absorbed as rapidly as when you have avocado, when you have oil. It's absorbed more slowly into the, into the bloodstream. And, and when you're talking about isocalorically, removing one other food and putting in avocado, you're still not gonna be hurt by the fat. But if you're eating the avocado in addition to the other calories, or you're eating nuts and seeds and snacking between meals and throwing your calories up above the level where they should be, then it's not gonna be good for your overall body fat. So it has to do with, we're having some whole food fats, but we're still doing it with the recognition that your calories have to can't go up and you can't be snacking on these foods and because they, they're calorically concentrated. Yeah, I think that's a really good tip for people because I often hear feedback. I can't put the bag of nuts down. What are they eating well, a bag case, of nuts? Use, for? What are they use using? the nuts as a salad topper. It's just used as part of the meal. You're not eating nuts out of, out of the bag. Right, because yeah. I could probably do that myself if, yeah. if I'm watching a basketball game and right. just mindlessly. <laughs> if you want to mindlessly eat, then eat snow pea pods or something. Don't eat right. nuts. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Eat cherry tomatoes or something if you yeah. want to mindlessly eat because it's too, you don't want to eat. What's your favorite nuts? Health-wise or taste-wise? Let's go taste-wise first and then Taste-wise, I like pistachio nuts the best. Mm -hmm. Health-wise, it's walnuts and hemp seeds, mm -hmm. but they're not my most favorite taste-wise. taste, nut, taste mm -hmm. you know. And you'd have those most days? I have, I try to make half my nut intake to be from walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, and hemp seeds. Mostly walnuts and hemp. I have a little bit of flax and chia. And the other half of my note intake could be all the things I like for taste. Pistachio, cashews, pecans, you know, things like that. Is that to get some of those, the healthy ALA fats? Yes. Yeah. Do you think that they're healthy? This is an interesting question. So we were talking earlier about supplementing DHA and EPA. Yeah, right, right. And I think sometimes people think that the only reason you need ALA is to convert to DHA and EPA. 
But would you say that ALA itself is inherently important as well? Yeah, yes, absolutely. So you get benefits from those foods and they stabilize the, myo the myocardium, the myocytes, the heart muscle, gets the ion channels and the calcium flux all gets stabilized. All these healthy um, foods and ALA stabilizes and helps you in other ways other than the conversion of EPA and DHA. That's true. And so you also see soups as a potentially good strategy for helping reduce caloric intake as well? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a favorite kind of soup? I do have my favorite kind of soup. What I like to make a soup that has a, um, a carrot juice base that has carrot juice and celery juice into the base. And then we mix in like split peas and other beans and mushrooms and onions and blended, um, you know, and spices and blended greens. And so I do make this um, soup with like a, a sweetened carrot juice base with a lot of pea, split peas that are blended into the base with a lot of onion and mushroom in there. I really love that soup.